Hey guys, today we are going to review more linear relationships. Our linear relationships formulas are still important. If you want to pause the video and write down slope formula, point slope form, slope intercept form, and standard at the top of your paper, that might be a good idea. So linear relationships, just like in our last lesson, most of them can be checked by using a graphing calculator. Remember the graphing calculator will only graph things in y equals form, so slope intercept form. Okay, so let's talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. So remember parallel lines are going the same direction, they never intersect, so they have the same slopes. And then perpendicular lines intersect at a 90 degree angle and we discovered that their slopes have opposite reciprocal slopes. So we can use those facts to write equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. Let's look at this first one. It says when the equation, write the equation of a line that is parallel to the x-axis and goes through 2.56. So when we're talking about parallel or perpendicular to the x or y axis, I like to draw a picture so I can visualize what is happening. So here's the x axis, here's the y axis, and if we are parallel to the x axis, that is going to be like this, another horizontal line, except it's actually going to be intersecting up here where that y value is 6 since it goes through the point to 0.56. So since this is a horizontal line going through the y axis, it's going to be a y equals equation and our y value in the point that they gave us is 6. So this equation would be y equals 6. Next one says write the equation of a line that is perpendicular to the x axis and goes through 1, 7. So again, I'm going to draw out my x and y axis. And this time I am perpendicular to the x axis. So that means I'm going to be going through the x axis and I'm going through the point 1, 7. So that means I'm going to have an x value of 1. It's going to be going through the x axis at 1. So this equation would be x equals, since it's a vertical line, going through the x axis and the x value they gave me in the point was 1. Okay, let's look at the next one. It says, what is the equation in standard form of the line that passes through the point 0, 9 and is parallel to the line y equals negative x plus 10? So standard form is ax plus by equals c. We can't ever just write a line, an equation in standard form. We have to go through point slope form or slope intercept form. And the very first thing I need to be able to write the equation of a line is the slope. So let's start with the slope. We are parallel to this line. So we're going to have the same slope of that line. And the slope of that line is negative 1. So now since I have the slope and I have a point, I can write it in point slope form. Or if they gave me the y-intercept, I can go ahead and write it in slope intercept form. And they did give me the y-intercept here because they gave me the point where the x value is 0. So that means my y-intercept is 9. So the equation in slope-intercept form would be y equals negative 1x or just negative x plus 9. And now I can convert this to standard form by adding x to both sides. And I get x plus y equals 9 for the standard form equation. Okay, let's look at the next one. It says, what is the equation in slope intercept form of the line that passes through the point negative 6, 5 and is perpendicular to the line y equals 3 fifths x plus 3? So let's start with the slope. If I am perpendicular to this equation, that equation has a slope of 3 fifths and the perpendicular slope is the opposite, so it was positive, the opposite would be negative, and 5 thirds is the reciprocal of 3 fifths. So there is my slope. This time they did not give me the y-intercept, so I cannot just write it in slope-intercept form. I'm going to start with point-slope form, and then I'll convert it to slope-intercept form. So I'm going to use the point negative 6, 5, 
for x1 and y1, and I'll write my equation in point-slope form, then convert it to uh, slope-intercept. So it'll be y minus the y value is 5 equals negative 5 thirds times x, and the x value is negative 6, so minus negative 6 would simplify to plus 6. And now I'm going to convert this to slope-intercept form by solving for y, so I'll distribute, and I get y minus 5 equals negative 5 thirds x. Negative 5 times 6 is negative 30, and negative 30 divided by 3 is negative 10. And then I would add 5 to get y by itself, and I get y equals negative 5 thirds x minus 5. Okay, let's talk about transformations to the linear parent function. So here is the linear parent function. It's just f of x equals x. It has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. And when we transform, make any changes to this line, it is going to change the slope and or the y-intercept of the line. So let's look at our first type of transformation when we just put a negative in front of the function notation. This is going to be a reflection And if we reflect the line over the x-axis, that is just going to change the direction of the slope. Remember, if you have forgotten the transformations, you can use Desmos to help you. You just have to make sure you define the parent function first. So I'm going to type f of x equals x. So there's the linear parent function. And then in the second line, since it knows what f of x is now, I can type negative f of x. And there I can see that reflection happening. So the negative means it is a reflection. It's going to change the direction of the slope. Now when we multiply the line by something, that is a dilation. Those are dilations. And it is going to change the steepness. So again, we can use Desmos to help us here. This 3 f of x, since I've defined f of x as the linear parent function in Desmos, I can just type in 3 f of x to see what's going to happen. And it looks like the line is steeper. And we can see it has a slope of 3. We go up 1 over 3. So 3 times f of x means that the slope of the line is 3 times steeper. So when we multiply by 3, that's just going to make the slope 3 times steeper. So now let's look what happens if we multiply by 1 third instead of 3 it looks like the line gets less steep and it looks like I go up one over three. So the line is one third times less steep. Okay, then we get to addition and subtraction. And when we add and subtract the line, that's going to shift to the line or its translations. And it changes the y-intercept. So let's look at these two right here, f of x plus 3 and f of x plus 3 inside the parentheses. So the f of x plus 3 is a vertical translation since it's outside the parentheses and it looks like I moved up 3. And then this f of x plus 3 inside the parentheses is actually a horizontal translation, but it ends up making the same line. 
and both of those lines just shifted up three. The green one was really technically going left three, but the same outcome happened with our y-intercept. The y-intercept shifted up three units. So then let's change those to subtraction. Outside the parentheses is a um, vertical transformation. So I know that it moved down and then this green one, since it's inside the parentheses is technically a horizontal transformation and we move right three, but the same outcome happened with our Y intercept. Our Y intercept shifted down three units. So these transformations can be difficult to remember. So just use Desmos to help you. Make sure that you put the parent function in the first line and then compare the transformations to it. And that can help you see what happened with the slope and the y-intercept. In general, when you multiply by something, that's gonna change the slope. And when you add or subtract by something, that's gonna change the y-intercept. All right, let's talk about linear inequalities next. So the most important thing about linear inequalities is they must be in slope intercept form in order to graph them and in order to determine the inequality sign. So you might look at this one right here and think it's less than, I'm gonna shade below, but you cannot do that because this is in standard form. You need to make sure that you convert it to slope intercept form before you compare an inequality to a graph. So all of these graphs right here, we are gonna determine what inequality sign they would have in slope intercept form. This first one is a solid line and it's shaded above. So that would be y is greater than or equal to in slope intercept form. This next one is a solid line and shaded below. So that would be less than or equal to in slope intercept form. Next one is a dashed line and shaded above, so that is greater than in slope intercept form. And then the last one is a dashed line and shaded below, so that is less than in slope intercept form. Okay, then this one says a graph 3x minus 5y is less than or equal to 10. Just like we talked about, it has to be in slope intercept form before you can graph it, so let's convert. I would subtract 3x from both sides. and we get negative five y is less than or equal to negative three x plus 10. And then the last step is to divide by a negative five. And since I'm dividing by a negative, I have to make sure I flip that inequality sign. So this inequality in slope intercept form would be y is greater than or equal to negative three divided by negative five simplifies to three fifths x and then 10 divided by negative five is negative two. So there's the inequality in slope intercept form and now I can graph it. The y intercept is negative two and then the slope is three fifths. So I'm gonna go up one, two, three, over one, two, three, four, five. You could also go down one, two, three, left, one, two, three, four, five. And it's going to be a solid line between these points since it was greater than or equal to. And then I need to shade above this line since it was greater than or equal to. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can look at the y-intercept and think about what region would be above it, which would be obviously this region. You can also test a point. The origin is a very easy point to test since it's just zero, zero. So if you plugged in zero for y and zero for x, that would make the inequality of zero is greater than or equal to negative two, which is true, so you would shade where the origin is. So there's two ways that you can think about which direction to shade. Just make sure you have it in slope intercept form to determine the inequality. Okay, last inequality just says write the inequality in slope intercept form. So it'll be y and the inequality sign will be less than since it's a dashed line and it's shaded below. The next thing I need for slope intercept form is the slope. So I'm going to draw a slope triangle. Okay. 
and my rise is one, two, three, four, five, six, and my run is one, two, three. I could have drawn a smaller slope triangle, but it was hard for me to find perfect points. So negative six over three is the slope, which simplifies to negative two. So it's negative two X, and then the Y intercept is three, so plus three. So there's the inequality in slope intercept form. Y is less than negative two X plus three. All right, last thing we're gonna look at is linear regression. You can do linear regression on Desmos, but this is something I prefer to use the TI calculator for. So I pulled up this one, it's called Calculate 84. It's really similar to the virtual TI that you'll have on your star test. So the bivariate data, which just means it has two parts to it, can be entered on a TI calculator in the stat plot which if you just hit stat enter, then you can get to the stat plot. And to find a calculator, find the, or to have the calculator find the line of best fit, you'll enter your data into the stat plot and then hit stat calc four. And with linear regression, we want to make sure that the stat diagnostics is on in mode so it can determine R, which is the correlation coefficient, which tells us the strength of the correlation. And I wrote out how to tell the strength of the R value to the side there. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice doing this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to mode and I'm gonna go down to stat diagnostic and I'm going to turn it on. You just arrow over to on and hit on. It says the table shows the pounds a baby weighs since X days that it was born. So now I'm gonna go to the stat plot, so stat, enter, and in L1, I'm gonna put the X values. And then in L2, I'll put the Y values. Day is the X values since that's the independent. So 0, 9, 18, 27, 34, 43, and 49. And then in L2, I will put pounds. Those are the Y values or the dependent. So 6, 8.6, 10, 13.6, 15, 17.2, and 19.8. And then I am going to get the line of best fit by going to stat, arrowing over to calc, and then going down to four, linear regression. And then you will just arrow down and hit enter. And here it tells us some information. Let's talk about the correlation coefficient first. That's the last number here. It's R equals positive 0 0.995. So what does that mean? First of all, that means that this is a strong correlation because it's kind of like a percentage that's saying 99%. So it's very close to one, so it's a strong correlation. And since that R value is positive, that means that it is a strong positive correlation. And then the last question says, what is the equation for the line of best fit? So the linear regression calculated the slope, which was the A value for us, and the Y intercept, which is the B value for us. So the equation for the line of best fit would be Y equals 0.275X, and then the Y value is 5.823, so plus 5.823.